Hey everyone, welcome back to Berlin Noir. Today we're going to be working on the old government quarter in the city, uh, a part of the city that no longer exists today. And I'll also be uh, getting around to letting you know who won the DLC giveaway in, from the previous video, so uh, stay tuned a little later in the video for that. But for the build, here is what we are doing here. Just the center part there uh, is the old government quarter. I guess you'd call it, honestly, I'm not even sure if that's, if, or I should say, I mean, the term makes sense, but I'm not sure if there's something else to call it that makes, uh, you know, a little better. Uh, I haven't been able actually to see if there's a name of this particular area here, um, but it is located, or I should say was located, uh, right along Wilhelmstrasse, uh, which just basically housed all the palaces for... Yeah, you know, the right president, the chancellor, the ministers, uh, you know, diff all the you know, head honchos, I guess, of the uh, government back then. Um, but yeah, so this is something that I completely didn't build and unintentionally ignored uh, the first time around, actually. Uh, I think just because I wasn't sure exactly what I was looking at. I wasn't sure if it was maybe an extension of the tear garden or something, because this is all the way back from basically... You know, this is an old picture here that of what it looks like back then. But this is stuff I built from, I don't know, the second or third episode uh, when I wasn't very familiar with the city. I mean, as you can see, I've, I even had that church there, uh, which uh, I believe that's the Apostle Paul Church, which is in Schöneberg. And nowhere near this area here. But uh, I, you know, obviously that uh, obviously isn't there anymore. As you can see, uh, I've been, you know, Deleting a lot of this stuff since we're trying to update parts of the city that are just old and not really, you know, I guess, realistic or uh, up to the historical accuracy that I'd like uh, that I've been following more recently in the series. But yeah, I'm glad we're getting around to this because it's definitely a cool area. The uh, buildings here are pretty neat. Um, as you can see, I already placed a few of them. Um, one of them, I think it's some sort of educational building, I'm not really sure. Uh, that was one on the far right. Uh, then I used that palace building that I've used kind of frequently across the city. But uh, it's just so useful and you can basically turn it into anything you want that, I don't know, I like using it for kind of just somewhat generic um, buildings that aren't, you know, that people don't recognize today. And considering these buildings don't really exist today, you know, I imagine uh, some of you, you know, would never have seen these buildings before. So I think it's okay to use that particular asset and a little more often than I'd like. But yeah, and then also this little building here that I'm currently working on, which uh, is the uh, residence from uh, from Munich. Uh, I like this building as well, but I, I've only ever used it currently in the city, only at the uh, Brandenburg Gate, which is right next to this. So I figured it was all right to kind of you put them right next to each other, you know, perhaps as some sort of like continuation. You know, I, I didn't think it'd be a little too weird, but uh, I wanted to make it, I guess, a little more interesting, a little more different, not simply just placing the building down. So I added kind of that little uh, area underneath that, uh, I guess, second story porch, I guess, and uh, adding some doors there, of course. Um, otherwise, because the porch would be useless if you can't access it. Um, and then on the back side, since it's a little messed up there, as you can see, I just decided to make like a little, I guess, elevated uh, walkway slash maybe an area for, you know, uh, whoever. Uh, this isn't, I'm, I mean, I should say I'm not exactly sure what building this is historically, uh, since there was a number of kind of smaller ones kind of placed about. Um, and I'm only doing three uh, along this uh, road here. So uh, the ones on both sides are, I guess, the more important ones that I'm uh, trying to focus on a little more. But uh, obviously I had to uh, fill in the space between. So yeah, I'm not really sure if this is, I mean, obviously it's some government building, not exactly sure for who or for what or whatever. But I just figured make some sort of thing in the back that perhaps someone could, you know, walk up here, give a little speech to some, I don't know, important people, rich people, who knows. <laughs> uh, that, that was my thinking here, just making a little nice area in the back, because um, most of this build here, um, maybe not, maybe not most of what is in this episode, but as far as time-wise, me building it, 
Um, almost half was just detailing the uh, garden areas behind these buildings. So, you know, for the most part, I guess these buildings here weren't too time consuming to build. Uh, obviously, stuff like this where I'm making it a little more custom, it did take some time. But actually building it, the gardens that we do get to later in the video, uh, that uh, definitely took a little more, a little bit more time. But so this building here uh, is the Reich Chancellery building. So, uh, of course, where the uh, Chancellor would live and work. And I, I like how it's laid out because uh, you'll see how we, as you know, we go through this video and stuff. But it's basically, I guess, kind of like a U shape. Uh, as well as the building to the right of this, um, the uh, Reich President building. But basically, uh, just like a little area for the cars, you know, I guess, to transport, you know, whoever, of course, uh, just for them to pull up like this here. And now we're on to the other building that uh, this is the President building. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's cool having just that little driveway going up rather than just simply detailing it with like a plain plaza or something because um, this building here definitely had more space to uh, add stuff here since uh, in real life it wasn't as long along the street I should say and maybe was a little deeper you know a little further back off the street um, so yeah this isn't exactly the most perfectly shaped building but it's still a general shape that I wanted and uh, I looked on the workshop for quite a while trying to find something and this is actually one building that I did come across that I didn't have or that I wasn't subscribed to previously so uh, you know I'm glad I uh, was able to find that just so I, you know I'm limited on available assets and such but this is the uh, real life building here the right president building with the uh, driveway going up kind of just a little circle for you you know the driver to pull in and leave once uh, whoever gets out or gets into the car or whatever but uh, it's a fairly simple entrance, really. I mean, you just have the fence there and some simple plants and such. Nothing nothing too fancy, really, at all, which is, I don't know, a little surprising. Uh, you would imagine for the head of state and our head of government, you know, for both the uh, chancellor and the president here, they would expect a little more, uh, I guess, more of a fancier, uh, fancier stuff. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, these these uh, buildings, I guess, existed far before the actual positions of those uh, those government positions existed. Um, I think they were both built sometime in the uh, mid-1800s about. I'm not exactly sure of the exact dates or anything. But, uh, yeah, they, they were homes to, like, princes or whoever beforehand. But uh, this one here is now the Chancellery Building for the Reich Chancellor. Also very, very similar to the other one. Um... Again, kind of like that U-shaped building where you could have the road going in and then uh, just, again, for, you know, the cars to come in and pick up and drop off the uh, Chancellor in this case. But, uh, yeah, I liked detailing this. I used the node controller there to kind of square off the, uh, the curves there, which I actually did for also the Brandenburg Gate part of it. But uh, I wish there was an option to only like square off part of it because I would have preferred to square off kind of the inner side of the road and then the outside part of the road uh, that is against and along the building I would have preferred that to have been curved normally um, but I don't think there's an option for that in the older version of no controller which is the one I have which is actually a question I've been meaning to ask uh, you all for several videos now but um, I'm sure most of you know that there are two node controller mods. There's the older one, the original one, and then there's a the newer one that's much more intuitive, much more easier to use, and I've used it in other cities, other builds, such as in Winden, and uh, I do vastly prefer that one. However, I'm nervous about switching because on the workshop it says that it should carry over, it should remember everything, but some stuff it won't, and there are... A couple intersections that took a whole lot of time to do uh, using node controller this one and I'd really hate to have to redo it um, such as the one we just did with uh, Potsdam or Plots uh, I'd hate to have to redo parts of that and other ones that are even worse or worse as far as time-consuming goes um, so I don't know I guess my question is if any of you have 
switched from the original one, the older one, to the newer one, and, you know, basically, was it smooth? Did you lose anything? Or if you did lose stuff, how much? Because I'd like to switch, but at the same time, again, I don't want to, you know, lose a lot of work and have to redo that there and redo all the intersections across the city because that'd be a pain, which I suppose I should be able to just simply unsubscribe if it doesn't remember stuff and go back to the original one. But uh, I don't know. I'm always deathly afraid to mess around with mods in this game. Uh, too often, you know, I hear people screwing their save games, never being able to play it again. And obviously that's not something I really want to risk at this point because, uh, you know, obviously I'd hate to... Uh, lose out on this series because if I somehow lose this break the save for whatever reason um, I'd probably want to move on because I'd be uh, too sad to, ha to go back and have to completely rebuild this entire city all this work two years in so yeah that's I'm always careful so yeah if any of you have experience let me know for sure because uh, I'd like to switch but not if it's uh, gonna risk anything but so I guess now's a good time to announce the winner of uh, the DLC giveaway that I mentioned in last week's video. Uh, just all I had to do was leave a, a comments and like the video to be entered in. And I uh, just did a random drawing based on the number of comments I had. And the winner is Chado21, or however you say your name, Chado, Chad, yeah, I'll, I'll just say Chado21. Um, so congrats to you. Let me know which DLC you'd like. Uh, preferably, I guess, contact me on either Instagram or Discord, uh, just so we can, you know, have a direct message. Otherwise, I guess, you know, reach out just in the comments and I'll, uh, get that DLC over to you. But, yeah, and good comment as well regarding the embassies at the, uh, Parisian Plots. I actually considered adding the flags there since I actually, a very long time ago, I made a French embassy in a different part of the city. And uh, I've considered, you know, relocating it to, I guess, its actual historical location. Um, but in the pictures, uh, historical pictures that I saw of that area there, I didn't see any flags. So uh, I guess I didn't want to, you know, clutter uh, the area or draw away the attention from other areas. Because flags are certainly cool. They certainly draw attention with their bright colors and such. But, you know, I didn't necessarily want that to be the main attention. Uh, of the plaza there but that being said you know as we move to updating other parts of the city there are a lot of embassies right here in the center of uh, Berlin uh, back then uh, and today of course but uh just basically along onto the London you know there's some embassies so maybe there I'll add some flags just to make it a little more obvious that there are embassies there but uh, yeah thanks for the comment and uh, congrats once again to uh, uh, to winning that DLC and thanks to everyone else for commenting. You know, it's a small thing leaving a comment and liking the video, but uh, we all I'm sure you hear it from every single YouTuber that you watch. But it's all about the algorithm, and comments and likes are uh, certainly important. But so congrats once again and thanks as well to everyone uh, for following the series again. You know, for 50 episodes and over two years. So yeah, thank you all once again. But so moving on, uh, so now we are, I guess, moving on to the back side of the, uh, this area here. So the back, the, uh, back sides of the buildings here. And yeah, so this is, I guess, about halfway through the video. So yeah, like I said earlier, this was, as far as building goes, you know, uh, pretty time consuming for me. And I don't know when I, when I, I kind of was not super excited I guess I don't really know why to uh, build this part probably just uh, looking at the aerial view uh, you know from the start of the video it's just covered in trees and obviously you know when whenever I see stuff like that you know you, you know there's stuff underneath the trees right of course it's a garden so it's gonna be very nice well manicured um, just stuff all the way around so Stuff like that, you know, you more or less have to rely on your own imagination, just uh, making a nice garden, add random things in there, and uh, hope for the best, more or less. But uh, one thing that I did see, or thought I saw, I honestly have no idea really what it is, but it's this interesting little thing here that I'm doing right now, which I guess I could show a zoomed up picture 
Uh, hopefully it's clear and not too blurry. But uh, yeah, it's kind of like that little flower kind of shape thing, almost like a sun as well. Um, it's it's a it's a cool little thing. I, again, I have really no idea what that was. It was just simply part of the garden or something else. Because uh, if you look at it closely, it looks like there's stuff there that's more than just trees or bushes, but I can't make it out. Um, so once I get around to actually detailing that part, I uh, go relatively simple with the uh, detailing and stuff. I don't uh, place too many things there. But uh, yeah, that was something interesting that I saw there and wanted to just recreate the general shape, I guess. But uh, yeah, continuing just to more or less lay the paths here, which uh, I just actually found these asphalt uh, paths on the workshop. So it's really, for the most part in the city, I've been using... They're not even paths, they're just pavement networks. So I just use invisible paths and lay them over the pavement networks after I'm done. But I was having trouble since with the uh, pavement networks and they're also like asphalt ne networks and grass networks. Uh, but with those, they uh, don't conform to the terrain at all. So basically if you don't have pretty level terrain you're gonna have issues um, either with stuff kind of hiding underneath underneath the ground or poking a little too high and you can you know notice uh, a big jump from the path down to the ground so I was having some trouble here which surprised me because I didn't really ex think there'd be such uh, terrain difference here because it's not at all noticeable uh, just by looking at it but apparently there was and I just kind of got annoyed trying to level everything out and it refusing to level out and still clipping into the ground and stuff for whatever reason. So I was like, okay, let's find something on the workshop. There's got to be some pavement actual paths of different sizes because that's also very important. Uh, whenever I use paths in the city, they're almost always available in different sizes. So this one here is four meters. Uh, but included in the pack was also 2 meters, 6 meters, and 8 meters. So I really like having that just, you know, diverse size available to me. Uh, just for the sake of realism, because of course paths throughout a city are all not going to be the exact same size. So it's very simple just to add different, you know, different widths of the paths, but it definitely adds realism and makes things look much nicer. But yeah, I came across these. I'm sure there's got to be pavement versions of these, but just my quick little search on the workshop, I didn't find any, so I didn't didn't use them and just decided to stick with the asphalt one just for a different texture since I'm always using pavement. So yeah, I think it's a nice little change there for uh, different uh, path textures. But so yeah, like these uh, pavement path looking things, these are the pavement networks. So these aren't actually paths. So people won't walk on walk on them unless I use the invisible paths. But uh, I just wanted to kind of break up the, I guess, dark colored paths and just add a little different texture there. So I decided just for this little corner here to go with the uh, pavement texture. And then uh, I wanted to add some sort of little elevation change, I guess. So I added this little wall here in the center and uh, just decided to add the grass surfaces just to raise it up, you know, just a small amount, uh, maybe a couple meters, whatever it is in game. But so yeah, I just kind of wanted to do something a little different, you know, rather than just doing the typical thing where I line up bushes or hedges or flowers, whatever, you know, just adding a little change in elevation, I guess, since the uh, city I've been building here in Berlin is very flat, and that's because Berlin in real life is pretty flat, uh, all things considered. But uh, yeah, whenever you have the opportunity to add any sort of change in elevation, uh, even if it's something like that, yeah, it just definitely adds some nice dimension, I guess, to what you're building and a little more added realism. So I don't have the opportunity to do it very much, but yeah, I do like to do it occasionally just to. Uh, Again, add that little more dimension to what you're building. But so, yeah, so these these buildings here are, I guess, the back side of uh, one of the sides of the uh, Brandenburg Gate, uh, the Breezer Pots there. So uh, I did extend those a little more off camera. 
Uh, so those, not all of those buildings were built. Not all of those buildings there were built in the previous episode when we did uh, that area there. But I just wanted to add a little more, uh, so it wasn't, you know, I guess too close to the Brandenburg Gate. These areas here, because uh, looking at the aerial view, uh, the uh, these palaces here, the government buildings were a little further away. So I did want to add some sort of distance there. But uh, also just to do something a little different here, I decided to have multiple, I guess, different textures and uh, you know, surface textures or different decals and such for this little area here. So I used that pavement stone, I guess it's a stone network. Um, so as you can see, it's ever so slightly raised off the ground, which allows you to very easily lay a decal underneath it. And if you convert it to PO, then as you see, it won't cover it. So it allows you to kind of just add uh, multiple layers there without really doing too much work. And uh, yeah, it's very simple to do. And I've done it in other parts of the city, uh, but I kind of forgot I had those... Uh, networks there because they are nice and uh, I should probably honestly use those as alternatives to my uh, ploppable just pavements that I use and I already mentioned that I use a lot for paths in the city I should probably use those uh, just to, you know and just to be a little different because uh, it definitely uh, can get a little repetitive if there's too many of those plain pavement uh, paths all around the city but so yeah, so now we are, I guess, getting on to the detailing aspects of the gardens, because up until this point with the gardens on the, on the rear side of the buildings here have been pretty much just laying the paths and uh, kind of planning that out, making sure it all looked right, made sense and all. But uh, yeah, I uh, so I guess I waited to the very end of uh, you know my building to get to this area because as I already mentioned I for whatever reason wasn't necessarily looking forward to detailing these parts but I do like how it turned out I have to say I think it looks pretty cool um, I did try some different things so like right here I added these little circles of the flowers here just uh, I don't know just kind of I just kind of thought about it more or less and figured eh, it'd probably be cool add some little hedges in the center and yeah I think it's looks different for sure it's unique <laughs> i'm not sure if that's necessarily a realistic uh gardening technique that would have been used back then but it definitely stands out there which is kind of the intention uh to make it look kind of fancy a little different and such but uh yeah and then just adding a simple little statue here since uh i mean yeah, you can really never go wrong with adding statues especially in a historical city uh, of course those are going to be all over the place especially in you know, the nicer parts of the city especially where you're going to be in the garden of government buildings so yeah that's definitely i use that particular statue quite a lot since it's uh uh pretty generic but i, I like how uh, large it is and its textures are pretty nice and all but uh yeah so just adding then a little fountain there as you can see that little circular decal of the stone in the center doesn't quite cover the I guess the entirety of that circular area there in the center but I left it there just because I kind of figured you know since there are different textures different stones there you know perhaps it's separating away from that other stone and kind of revealing the grass in between and some grass is kind of popping up in the cracks so uh, I don't know from a distance it kind of looks cool actually so I figured I'd just leave it there and uh, yeah it turned out all right I thought but so now yeah so here we are back to the flower looking slash maybe sun creative looking sun thing whatever you want to call this area here but yeah so this is what i mentioned where i kind of went simple on the detailing because when i was looking at the aerial view of this like i said i could kind of see that there was stuff there that wasn't bushes hedges flowers trees uh, i just couldn't make out what the heck it was so i just went pretty simple uh with those I guess I'll just call it a flower so the petals I guess where I kind of laid those bushes with the statues there and then this part of the center of the flower I guess if you want to call it um, I decided here to be a little more uh, I guess intricate with the detailing and uh, add some cool flowers and such so kind of divided it up into quarters here just like that and then I uh, just added some different colored flowers 
Um, just, uh, I guess this is where the uh, more of the colors were going to be since I was planning on doing some more simple stuff um, for the petals of the flower. Yeah, if we, again, if we want to call it a flower. But, uh, yeah, I think it looks interesting, I guess, at least to say. Uh, once, you know, this entire area is filled in with a lot of trees, it definitely stands out, which was part of, I guess, the point. Because whenever there's areas, you know, like this, or say, for instance, the tear garden, that are just completely covered in trees, really, you know, you can't really make out what's on the ground at all. But of course, you know, there's plenty of stuff on the ground. Uh, what I like to do typically is, you know, cover it in trees, kind of go overboard with the trees, but definitely leave some patches here and there of open space. And that's where I guess I focus more so on the detailing. So, for instance, here I figured I'd make a little open area here. And I have no idea if there was a pond here. I mean, it's obviously a nice area, part of the government building, so it makes sense that a pond could certainly have been here. But I didn't, like, see it or anything on the uh, aerial view or anything like that. But so that's going to do it for today's episode. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. And hopefully you all have been enjoying the updates and... Uh, I guess remodeling we've been doing to a lot of the city. Um, definitely let me know in the comments if you'd like to continue, you know, a lot of this stuff, or if perhaps you'd like me to take a break and you know do some new stuff. I guess uh, build some new things that we haven't done before. But uh, definitely drop a comment and let me know what you'd like to see, and uh, give the video a thumbs up as well if you enjoyed it. And consider checking out my Patreon as well if uh, you'd like to support the channel, uh, get exclusive perks as uh, well as access to the save game. But so that'll do it, and I will see you all next time.